How's school going? I see my daughter a lot. She lives quite close to me. She's positive and happy to be alive. And we appreciate the little things together, her and I. Um, we're really close. So when did they make the new appointment for? When people talk about the little things, it's because they want to save her life. That's what Lisa James and her daughter Tia are doing. Tia's only 24, but she has a disease where tumors grow in her spine and brain. She'll call me if she's feeling sick. She has a hard time swallowing, so if she's um, feeling nauseous, I'll make sure I'm there. Just in case something goes wrong, she chokes. Or I try to go to appointments with her. She's got an army of doctors. Tia's condition is unpredictable, and so the time mom and daughter spend together is precious, and their big dream is almost urgent. I would love to take her to Greece. Um, she is dying to go see the Greek islands, um, something we daydream about, talk about for the future. You know, just go stay up in those beautiful white hills and eat Greek food, and we both love swimming, so just, yeah, go away with her. Holidays in Greece don't come cheap, and these days, like thousands of people, Lisa doesn't have a job. But that's not actually her biggest challenge. Thank you. Seven eights, please. Yeah. Nobody knows I'm an addict. I'm quite open, so I share with some people. They're always shocked. You know, you're an addict, really? A heroin addict? You know, they would just never know. And that's a nice feeling. That's heroin Lisa just injected into her arm. Heroin she's given twice a day, every day, at the Crosstown Clinic in Vancouver. Here they don't push you to quit, they give you the drug. That's their treatment. There's nothing like it anywhere in North America. The clinic is for long-time addicts who've been unable to get off opioids using other treatments, including methadone. The first time Lisa got high, she was 12 years old. My grandma, who was actually an opiate addict and probably wasn't aware of that, she gave me uh, some Tylenol-1 with codeine in it, just to help because I had a terrible headache. And I just remember the warmth coming over me and I loved it, and I just wanted more. All through my teenage years, I stole from people's cabinets. Um, whether it was friends, parents, um, I stole things from drugstores, crushed them up and snort them, trying to get that feeling. Then when I was in my 20s, I tried heroin, and that was a whole different level. I, I just snorted it back then, I didn't use a needle, but I was in heaven, absolute heaven. It wasn't long before the heroin completely took over Lisa's life. And then one night with her good friend Otis and another addict, heaven turned to hell. That night, we all OD'd. I, I couldn't see for uh, probably 20 minutes or so. My other friend just dropped to the floor. Um, Otis went to bed. And um, we all went in there and laid down for a while. And in the middle of the night, at some point, I heard his girlfriend start screaming and he had stopped breathing. And I pulled him off the bed and tried to do CPR, but he had, um, he'd actually bitten off his tongue. He was already gone. He'd been gone for a while. Yeah, still think about him. These days, Lisa often comes to this garden close to Vancouver's downtown east side where she used to buy her dope. She could have died just like Otis that night or any number of times after if she hadn't met this guy. I've been working in the downtown east side for close to 20 years now, so, uh, and I got my job partly just because I, I know a lot of people in the downtown east side. Hey, Les. Hey, how are you doing? Right. Nice to see you. Kurt Locke's famous around here. <laughs> How's it going? His business card Good, says he's the research coordinator at the heroin clinic, but on the street, he's the guy who might be able to rescue you. You know, when you're the guy who has the free heroin, Sometimes you make friends around here that way, right? I wish there's room right now. The, whole the clinic's full now, but addicts still come up to Kurt every day and he has to turn them away. 
I see pretty much hopelessness in their eyes. I see desperation. When they come and see me, this is like their last straw. I, I've had people just, after I've told them, just break down and start crying. That actually, it doesn't just, it happens all the time. So. It happens with Kieran. Yeah. So, he wants in too. But, uh, it wasn't that yeah. long ago that Kieran so was teaching snowboarding and working in restaurants. Let me ask you this, Kieran. Have you done heroin today? Of course I have. Or I'd be sick right now. I wouldn't be here. Critics of this program will say they shouldn't be giving people like you heroin. They should f figure out a way to quit. A heroin addict wants to quit. A heroin addict doesn't. It's, it's not roses. It owns a piece of your soul, and you just do you do what you have to do and the time goes by so fast days turn into weeks weeks turn into months and before you know it you start and I oh 20 years have gone by if things don't change for you what's gonna happen oh I'll be dead and not long what's it like to say that that scares me Death is never far away if you're an opioid addict, especially right now. BC is in the middle of a crisis, with two people dying every day from overdoses. In this neighborhood alone, Kurt says Kieran is just one of 500 opioid addicts who need his heroin treatment. But the clinic's full at 130. That leaves a lot of desperate addicts, some of whom aren't happy to see Kurt anymore. Oh, they're just yelling at me like, I'm ready to get the treatment. I need this treatment. And, uh, yeah, yeah. and I, I just be, cause, and I felt awful for them because they should be getting the treatment. But, uh, and people were throwing bottles at me and whatnot. There's anger elsewhere as well. Former health minister Rana Ambrose tried to shut the heroin clinic down, saying the goal must be to get heroin out of the hands of addicts. It took an order from BC Supreme Court to keep it open. Are you enabling drug addicts? When we provide this treatment, we're enabling them, but not enabling them to continue doing evil in that simplistic sense. We're enabling them to get stability in their life again. We're enabling them to have a meaningful life again. But aren't we subsidizing the use of a poison? This is heroin people are injecting into themselves several times a day. Well, it is counterintuitive to a lot of people. They think that there's something intrinsically within the heroin that's harming people. And, and that's just not the case. Uh, we, but we've been brought up to think about heroin as just the killer drug. But heroin itself, as long, if, you, if you take it in proper conditions and you're eating food and you're getting sleep and you're taking care of all the other aspects of your life, uh, there's no reason why you couldn't live to be 100 years old on the drug. Got a lot of time here. Kurt says that the terrible health effects of opioid addiction come from what it takes to feed the habit. There are no days off, and before you know it, food, shelter, medicine, sleep, all take a back seat to drugs. You could have told me that to get my drugs, I'd have to walk across the street and be hit by a car. I would have done it. You know, I really would have. That's how bad the need is once it starts. It's a whole different monster. I, I had no way to control it. Lisa says heroin turned her into a criminal. She shoplifted every day. And she stopped being a mom to Tia. I stole from her. She trusted me with her bank card. And I took $500 or so out of her account. And then I had to face her the next day and being the sweet, lovely girl she is, she never wanted to make me feel bad, but if anybody would have told me that I would do something so despicable, I just never would have believed it. At the clinic, all the addicts have similar stories. After they inject their heroin, they hang around and talk about what they'd be doing if they weren't getting their drugs here. The wreckage that one addict leaves behind them while trying to, trying to, support, it, trying to support that habit, it's a wake of of pain. Before, I was the guy you didn't want next door. <laughs> you didn't want me in the building. <laughs> bang, bang. <laughs> I robbed banks because I need money to do dope. And uh, I don't do that anymore. I'm grateful for that.
before it would just be get up and hustle, 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 try to get enough money to feel okay. Like I just did my shot an hour ago, and do I look high? I'm, you know, I'm just normal, you know? And that feels nice. It cost $27,000 for the clinic to supply heroin for a single addict for a year. The societal savings are harder to calculate, but for Lisa, they're crystal clear. Yeah. My relationship with my daughter is better than it's ever been. I didn't have the energy for that before, and I, all of my energy went to drug seeking. Now I call her up and I actually have some money so we could go out and have a dinner or watch a movie, or, and I can be there to just listen to her and just be there for her. Do you think you'll use heroin for the rest of your life? As much as I would love to say no, maybe one day I'll stop. It doesn't seem to be the reality for me. I've always found a way to use. And I'm not hurting anybody this way. You know, I'm not even hurting myself. So that's a very real possibility. Yeah, I might be using for the rest of my life. But I can live with that. This way, I can live with that. Nick Purden, CBC News, Vancouver.